Hello, my name is Destiny. Uh, my name is Robert Chibbery. Uh We're going to be talking about... Dreams from My Father by Barack Obama. Uh, okay, this is an 18 chapter book. Uh, this was the first book uh, Barack Obama wrote. Um, he has another book. Um, so this is a book that really talks about his life and his upbringings and his roots. Um, in the first chapter, Origins, starts with a call he got from his aunt in Kenya who informed him about the uh, passing away of his dad. Um, this was just a few months after his, right after his 21st birthday. Um, the auntie told him that the dad just died in a car accident. Uh, that took us, that he then, that then took us to the whole, how the whole thing started, which is that his dad was an international student who had come to America uh, on a scholarship. Uh, his father met his mom named Aunt Anne, and they uh, fell in love. They met at a Russian course class. They fell in love and they got married uh, and had a child, which was Barack Obama Jr. in 1961. Uh, he says Anne's parents were kind of were a little bit weary about the marriage, given that uh, she was a white lady and he was an uh, African man. But he said the moment they met Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama Sr., which was his dad, they saw he was an intelligent and smart man and they liked him the wrong moment. Um, two years after the marriage in 1963, the couple got separated and Barack Obama Sr. went back to Kenya. Uh, at this time, Barack Obama was two and he really didn't, he couldn't remember anything with his real dad, which makes sense. A kid, a two year old kid, couldn't really remember much things. Uh, so his mom and the grandparents were the ones that raised him. He called his granddad, his grandfather, he called him Gramps, and he called the grandmom um, Tauds. Um, his mom and remarried, got remarried to an Indonesian man, um, which he, he describes this man as a very good man, and he said he was the, a great stepdad, and which made them move to Indonesia. Uh, but while in Indonesia, the, his mom decided to homeschool him because she wasn't happy with the quality of education back there. Uh, but after some years of homeschooling him, she felt that he needed to actually being in an actual school environment, so she brought him back to the United States where he lived with his grandparents, where he started to live with his grandparents. Um, uh, so f while he was with the grandparents, um, he, they enrolled him in the school. Um, the, the name of the school, he said it was a very reputable prep school named uh, Punahou Academy. Um, but he said while he was in that school, he encountered problems with bigotry at this academy. Um, he said uh, most of the abuse he got was, came from his mixed heritage, him ha being half black and half white. Um, he said all this led to him dabbling into alcohol and reefer, marijuana. Um, and this was, uh, as he, he described it as a dark part of his life and it affected his educational, um, it, it, it affected his education. Um, but he said he always remembered what his mother instilled in him, which was a, a core of self-independence that he would never lose. So while there, he had to pick up himself, and he graduated with honors, and he received a scholarship to, to attend a college, Occidental College in Pasadena, California. So while in California, he also encountered the same problems, racial slurs and substance temptation, um, temptations and too much part in, you know, the average college life. And... After that, he decided to transfer to Columbia University in New York City, where he re where he he had also found out that he has also reunited with his half sister from his father's second marriage. He said he studied hard in Columbia. Uh, he got off alcohol and drugs, uh, alcohol and marijuana. He studied hard, and he graduated with honors in 1983. Uh, following following his graduation in 1983, he became a young man. Now he decided to move into his next next phase of his life, which is uh, what she's going to talk about. Um, after he graduated, he moved to well. After he moved to Chicago, he started working inside a lot of community um centers. His first thing he did was an asbestos case. This case was it was asbestos inside of underprivileged schools and inside of white schools. So they moved they removed the asbestos out of the white kids' schools. But they didn't remove it out of the underprivileged schools. So the case was trying to get trying to get that removed out of the schools for the kids. Um, they kind of they succeeded in the long run, but they had to. 
choose between getting a new roof or removing the asbestos case. So all the support that he gained and the recognition he gained kind of fell short because at the end of the day, one of the one of the two things weren't going to get done. After that case, he started to, he left the community center and he became the first African-American editor of the Law Review. When he returned, he set up shop in, like, in an inner city inside of Chicago and he was an advocate for the oppressed people. Like poor people, black people, kids, students, a lot of, there was a lot of poor people in Chicago that didn't get an education. So his next step was the education reform, which was changing the way they provided education to the kids. Schools, the schools, the textbooks, the students, the parents. He mostly said that some of the parents weren't involved inside of the kids' lives. So he wanted to get the P PTO involved and help them out a lot. The next step was him going back to Kenya and visiting his roots. That was where he, I guess he realized that racism was everywhere because even inside of Kenya, he received racism from the people that were there. Um, one incident was when him and his aunt, was that his aunt, Amma? Or is that his sister? That was his sister. His sister, Alma. So his sister, Alma, they went to a restaurant. They sat down and they were eating. Well, wow. Well, they didn't even get a chance to eat. They sat down. They didn't get served. They wouldn't get. They wouldn't give them a menu. They didn't want to serve them. But they served the German-like people, the white people. But they wouldn't serve them because of their color. So after the incident, I guess he really, really, really knew that racism was everywhere. And he couldn't just run, run away from it. So he found his roots. He talked to his family. He heard more stories about his father. And... He met the grandparents, like he met the whole family. Um, but um, reading the book has made me made us realize this, uh, why he became the man who he was. Um, it comes from the book. You can tell that he had already faced uh, questions about racial discrimination coming from him having a mixed heritage. So from a young age, he's been able to experience all this, and I think it made him become become the kind of man he is, and eventually become um, become the kind of president he became. Um, we can see that he he had like he made a landmark victory in the passing of the bill, which made it possible for people of every sexuality to get married to one another. Uh, I think everything all stems from his background, which is yeah, like not, his father as well. To those right, stories, right? So I think uh, it all adds up together and it makes sense. And I think it's a great book. Um, and I would advise anyone to read it. Um, yes, read this book. It is great. Yeah, we had a lot of fun reading this book. And um, I would, we would like to do this again if we could. But um, it was a great book. We enjoyed our time doing this. And um, uh, I think we'll still have more time. Uh, but I, we can still talk about him because I think he was such a great man. And he was a great president. And I guess with, with the kind of president we have now, that we can actually see how much of a great president he was. Um, so that's my opinion about the book. I love the book. Um, I learned a lot of things from the book. I learned. I pretty much learned about confidence because he said that was one thing he had actually learned from his grandfather. That was one thing his grandfather told him about his dad, that the dad was a real confident man. And that was something his grandfather actually admired about Obama's dad. And we can see that that's such, a, such a that confidence was something that actually made him to um, project against challenges that came towards him. Uh, will be the challenge of drugs and alcohol or the challenge of racial slurs directed at him. Uh, he said it was this confidence which his mom always told him to always rise above. So he said in times of whenever whenever he faced such difficulties, such confidence was something that elevated him above it. So uh, it was a great book. Yeah, I think another thing that really um, spoke to me was his name because his name is Barack Obama. But when he was in America, that really didn't mean anything to them. Like Barack Obama, like that was just a that didn't mean anything to him. That was an African name. So right. once he came back from Kenya, you know, he learned his roots. He learned that you know his name really meant something, and he was worth something, and he mm -hmm. meant something. I think that really made him become the person he is today. That made him. His confidence just go through the roof, learning yes. that what his name meant, like yes. what and Obama I think, was. I think Obama happened to be blessed from when he blessed, so I think that made him realize how much of a blessed man he was. And he said here he was happy he embraced his African roots and heritage. And he met a lot of his extended family members, people he didn't even know, but now he was able to see another side of his family. Because growing up, he had just been used to the part of his mom, the white family. The grandparents so now seeing the other pet actually made him become a better man uh, so this is our book analysis um, we hope we did a good job uh, we were happy doing this book uh, it's a great book and I would recommend it to anyone thank you <laughs>